Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. In today's information age, the importance of chips is beyond doubt, but as the crystallization of the world's top technology, the technical difficulty of chip research and development is also very high. China started late in the field of chips, and many core technologies and underlying technologies are in the hands of the United States. If it wants to independently develop chips, it must start from the basics. In addition to the difficulty of research and development, the supply chain of the chip industry is also a problem. Just chip manufacturing requires multiple steps such as photolithography, etching, cleaning, and precipitation. More than 10 kinds of semiconductor equipment are needed, as well as chip design, chip packaging and testing, and other links. The United States just wants to slow down the development of Chinese chips by excluding China from the world supply chain. It's just that this move by the United States is undoubtedly an invalid behavior, and it will only lead to market chaos in the semiconductor industry. In any case, if you want to develop Chinese chips, you need to rely on independent research and development. Only by mastering the core technology can you avoid being stuck. Many enterprises and talents in China have devoted themselves to the field of chips and have made many important progress for the development of chips in China. Among them, Deng Zhonghan and his Starlight China Chip Project are an important part of the history of China's chip development. It can even be said that China's first self-developed chip came from Deng Zhonghan. The young genius Deng Zhonghan left the United States and returned to China. Deng Zhonghan, who was born in 1968, not only founded Vimicro Group, but also is an academician of the Chinese Academy of Engineering and the commander-in-chief of the Starlight China Chip Project. He has contributed a lot to the development of China's chips and developed China's first chip with independent property rights. Ended the history of China without chips. Since he was a teenager, Deng Zhonghan has been full of curiosity an exploratory spirit towards the world. After he was admitted to the Department of Earth and Space Science at the University of Science and Technology of China, Deng Zhonghan's talent was gradually discovered. When he was in college, Deng Zhonghan also pointed out the professor's thinking deviation in solving problems, and because of this, he was favored by the professor and joined the project team. After Deng Zhonghan entered the University of Berkeley, he successively obtained a master's degree in physics, a doctorate in electrical engineering, and a master's degree in economics and management. After graduation, Deng Zhonghan founded an integrated circuit company in the Silicon Valley of the United States. Deng Zhonghan's entrepreneurship was a great success, and the market value of the company he founded once reached 115 million US dollars. However, at the invitation of Zhu Guang, chairman of the China Association for Science and Technology, Deng Zhonghan resolutely gave up his company in the United States and returned to China to engage in chip research and development. After returning to China, Deng Zhonghan founded Vimicro and started the Starlight China Chip Project, officially entering the field of chip research and development. The prelude to the rise of China's chips has begun. During the chip research and development process, Deng Zhonghan's conditions were very difficult, and he could only conduct research and development in the warehouse 
and once faced the risk of capital chain rupture. But in the face of many difficulties, Deng Zhonghan did not give up lightly, but faced up to the difficulties and solved one problem after another. On March 11, 2001, under the unremitting efforts of Deng Zhonghan and his R&D team, Vimicro launched China's first chip with independent property rights, Qingguang No. 1. Starlight No. 1 is a multimedia chip, and it is also a large-scale integrated circuit chip, and its technical content was not low at the time. After that, Vimicro launched the Starlight series chips into the market and successfully listed them in the United States, which made the reputation of Chinese chips and opened the prelude to the rise of Chinese chips. Deng Zhonghan himself became an academician of the Chinese Academy of Engineering and a foreign academician of the American Academy of Engineering. It is not difficult to see from this information that Deng Zhonghan has provided a major boost to the rise of China's chips. With the development of time, many top Chinese technology companies have entered the chip track one after another. According to statistics, from 2019 to the present, a total of 40,000 companies in China have entered the chip-related field. It can be said that China's chips are developing flourish and gradually rise. With the support of national policies and the large investment of some top companies, Chinese chips have gradually made major breakthroughs in many fields, such as Huawei's self-developed Karine chips and EDA industrial software, which are also at the advanced level in the world. Shanghai Microelectronics has gradually come to the forefront of the world in semiconductor fields, such as etching machines and lithography machines, and can reach the top five in the world in terms of market share. Now China's chip industry can be said to be flourishing, and the entire chip industry chain has a Chinese layout, but China should always keep in mind that it was Deng Zhonghan and his Starlight China chip project that opened the prelude to the rise of China's chips. The United States wants to restrict the development of China's semiconductor industry and even high technology through chip blockade, but this move by the United States will undoubtedly shatter the dream, and Chinese chip companies are gradually rising. For a long time, Chinese companies have had a mentality of making is worse than buying and buying is worse than renting. If they can always obtain foreign supply, it is indeed more economical to buy chips, but if they do not master the core technology, they will not be able to buy chips. There is no way to avoid being stuck, and China cannot have illusions about foreign companies. 